Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I am here with The Legend of Korra episode number 5 and 6 reaction. Alright, uh, the previous two episodes, episode number 3, we had a run in with Amon. <coughs> Bolin got kind of kidnapped and uh, Marco and um, Korra had to go in and break him out of uh amon's place and we're getting to see more about the qualists like uh, amon said something about how he was like a victim of uh you know like the benders and that's why like you know he wants uh to take not take revenge but he wants that not happening to anyone that's why they're making the qualists this and that a lot of things i'm not sure if that is true or if that if he made that up on the spot just to like you know gather favor from all the other people we'll have to wait for that like you know like i'm sure they're going to tell us his story he's part of the story as well we'll get to know then surely if he's actually telling the truth or if this is something that he just made up on the spot so yeah we bring bolin out of there and uh, yeah little like you know fighting happens uh we get to see that uh, amon has a technique which can take away bending which terrifies Cora, obviously like like you know i don't blame her uh and like obviously it's surprising because taking away bending is only something that ang could have could do so even tenzin was like in shock so let's see what happens actually what that was about how he takes bending away and whatnot and that was episode three and episode four we meet a few new characters starlock and um what was the name of the girl asami yeah asami uh tarlock and asami uh tarlock is one of them <laughs> I think he, he's probably one of the antagonists of this series i think so because the things that he's doing my god he he's full-on manipulating people left and right for his own gains using Korra, doing whatever the hell he wants to and yeah like i feel like this guy will be a problem in the future and he almost got Korra not killed but he almost like you know made Korra go to uh like you know face uh amon on her own like it was him instigating the whole thing and not like you know stopping the reporters as well like you know putting peer pressure on Korra all that stuff so like you know Amon came in like you know like uh, Korra challenged Amon Amon came and Amon thankfully didn't take away her bending this time um so yeah everything in the, in the end everything was because of Tarlock it wasn't it so yeah like that's one bad character I feel so yeah I don't like him I don't know like you know if that will change in the future or not but we'll have to wait for that and there's this whole thing with Asami, him, her being involved with the Sato. No, uh, what was the name? Uh, Sato, yeah, S Sato, yeah, the Sato, uh, you know, like automobiles and her dad being the main, uh, like, you know, owner of that, all that stuff. And they spawn, they're going to sponsor Marco's, uh, you know, a sports event, all that stuff. And they, like, you know, she and Marco is kind of getting well together. All that stuff was happening and like a lot of things and Korra with her own problems this that <laughs> like it's kind of getting into a very uh, complicated situation so yeah let's see what happens so this is episode number five so yeah without further ado let's get started i'll be putting the subtitles and the time in here sync it whichever is your preference and let's start all right here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> okay <laughs> uh. <laughs> I love the recap the way they narrate the recap <laughs> You know this <laughs> this way of narration and the okay the spirit of competition. Wow, this place is really amazing. The you know the infrastructure and all. Wow, for a moment I thought that was Saka. <laughs> okay, kind of looks like Saka, you know, with the headgear. Oh God. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> um. <laughs> Okay. Oh, the sponsorship thing. Wait, what? Wait, what is happening? <laughs> Wait, that was fast. Damn. Okay. Um, um, be a bit <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> well, oh my god, poor guy. Oh, is, is he also going to wear a uniform? What? <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> oh damn. Uh <laughs> 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 Look who, who's saying. <laughs> nah, Pablo doesn't care. He, he just wants to get out of the bath. Whoa, what is this place? Oh, this is... Whoa. Oh, they're feeding the momos. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? Wait, what? This 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 sounds like Azula. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh really? Wait, really? <clears throat> All right, let's go. The fire ferrets. Rubberu. All right. Nice. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> and the task force as well. Like 
<coughs> Gora has a lot of things she's doing now currently. Oh wow, that was quick. Okay. Nice. Good. Ooh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> My God, completely bash them. Wow. Okay, this this is completely overwhelming. <clears throat> um Okay, is now the really the time? Oh my god! Wait, what? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh no, this is probably affect their matches from here onwards. Oh boy, this is going to affect the matches. <coughs> okay. Well. Um, don't start now, Bolin. Oh my god. This is a mess. <laughs> Make it worse. What is happening? Is is this like, like this looks like some kind of a I don't know like some teenage rom com drama or something? Like what's with this episode? <laughs> My God. Okay, I was I was not expecting something like that. Okay. No, this is from the water truck. Okay. Okay, you're being a bit. You're being a bit pushy. Who the? Oh. It's... Um. He, she's going to do that. So. Whoa, he has pictures behind him. Uh. <laughs> well, all right. Uh. No, I think he needs to be taught a lesson. Damn, that face completely is very much punchable. Yes, there you go. No need to dirty your hands. Wow! <laughs> Typical rich boy. Even his mannerisms. Ah. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> okay.
Well, okay, I guess everything's going well. What? What's with this episode? I'm... Like, I'm not expecting something like this from... Obviously, this is a different show, like uh, Legend of Korra, but... Oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> hey, Marco! Well, now is the time that they're going to lose. I'm like, obviously, that's going to happen. No one's going to cooperate properly now. Be Borg, what? Wait, what was the name? Borcupines? Oh, there you go. Everything's getting messed up now. Borcupines. Borcupines, all right. Um. <coughs> okay, there you go. They're getting in them, but also getting hit. <coughs> yes. Wow. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Die. Oh boy. That's good. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is good, you know, like the bowling's going to face. Like, like I th I don't think Korra or Marco would have been able to handle this, at least for now. With their Okay. Oh nice. Yes! There you go. <coughs> Good, there you go. You better fix your um, problems, you know. Otherwise, you won't be in the semifinals. I think the, the one who's at fault here is Marco. Uh, I'm not... Cora's not at fault here. <clears throat> oh, great. Wait, what the? Wait, what's happening with this episode? Is this episode 5? What is happening? Oh my god! Well, obviously! No. <laughs> the way it's running! <laughs> what? Oh my god, what is. <laughs> uh... Now nah, your brother's <laughs> probably. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Brother betrayer. It's Pabu. Yes. Yeah.
<laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this is a mess. Power, <laughs> look at him. Well, you're losing this match, I think. My god. Ugh. Buzzard Wops. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> oh, is this? Wait. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Oh my god, he is going to throw up. <laughs> no, this is no this. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Perfect chance to plug in. Oh boy. Oh no! Oh. <clears throat> oh boy. <clears throat> oh no. Oh no. Okay, good. There you go. There you go. Oh. Oh, you, oh, you can't do that. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. No! They're not even trying properly. Ah! Oh no! Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably fractured or something. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, she's still holding on. There you go. That's what airbending does to you. <laughs> nice. Okay, come on. She can probably handle them. Hopefully. Woo! There you go. Well, looks like she basically need a little alone time, you know? That did it. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Oh boy, here we go. These people. <clears throat> Great. Here we go. Wow. 
Yeah, probably your own. <laughs> oh my god, here we go. Yeah, you're probably spelling that a while ago, you know. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm, that's true. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot. Ah! <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she, Qatar was a teacher. It'll be okay. There you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> yep, there you go. Okay, so that's what's going to be the final. My god. Alright. Okay, that's the end. Hmm. Okay, this episode. My god, I was really thrown off by this episode. Like, as I said, I need to get accustomed to all of this. I feel like this will probably be like the way this goes. Like, as, you know, like since I'm accustomed to Avatar, like obviously Avatar had drama, but a little bit, you know, like not that much. Like sometimes, uh, like, you know, Aang, uh, Katara, they had misunderstandings and stuff. There were stuff, you know, like little bits and pieces. But I feel like this episode in Korra was probably one hell of a ride. Like, my God, the... <laughs> like i don't know what to say like this looks like some kind of uh teen romantic drama or something like what like you know like i i, I was really surprised that like this was uh, like you know that they had an episode like this like everything was in there in here here you know like the whole thing with asami and uh what's what's the name um uh, Mako then then you know like Cora Cora also telling Mako how she feels and then like you know the whole thing with Bolin then like you know uh, Mako confronting Bolin uh, like you know Cora talking with Mako again the whole kiss situation then like you know Bolin seeing that and then getting awkward again and like my god this was a mess this episode was a mess completely in in, in the standpoint like I I, I didn't I think I was watching and you know, I felt the genre suddenly shifted into a completely different direction <laughs> but I'm guessing this will be like you know this is probably for this own this episode only in the from the next episode I'm guessing everything's going to go back to normal <laughs> but I was not expecting something like that this and uh, yeah since obviously like you know like Avatar as I said Avatar had its, had its own fair share of dramas but not like this you know like like this much in in one sim one episode all jammed in together <laughs> i feel like uh, if you calculate uh, like you know avatar the last airbenders all the episodes drama together you know you can probably make this one episode out of that like this episode had everything <laughs> my god like what a what a mess now <clears throat> you know i have to say um, I feel like in this whole situation, the one who was at most fault was Marco. Then the one who was at fault was Cora. And obviously Bolin was in not any fault at all. Like Bolin was completely okay with it. Like, you know, she was completely fine with everything. And, you know, he, he, like, he was not like, you know, involved in this drama. He just got into the crossfire a little bit. And while the one who was most at fault was Marco, the one who was second most at fault was Cora. Why I'm saying Marco was at fault is because number one, he is he was being indecisive. That's number one. Like you know, the whole situation with him actually like you know going for Asami. Obviously, he did reject Cora. Like that's one thing that he did in the beginning, and still Cora kind of persisted, gently like you know like kind of. Uh, 
uh, not persistently, but uh, you know what? After she rejected Koda, Koda did try to move on. So then Marco did come back again and like, you know, kind of, you know, start like, you know, talking with Bolin and Koda saying that, oh, why are you doing this? What's up with you? All that stuff, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> so nah, I think, yeah, Marco was fully at fault here, in my opinion, because as I said, he was, number one, he was indecisive. Uh, number two, he himself was didn't realize what the hell he wanted to do. And I don't think he still realizes what he wants to do. Does he want to keep going with Asami or does he want to uh, like, move along with Korra? Now, <clears throat> like obviously, like this, they're, they're, te they're teenagers. I think they're teenagers, aren't they? I don't even know their ages. Something like that, I think. Uh, they're teenagers, so obviously, <laughs> like, you know, I, I cannot, like, you know, completely blame them because everything is quite new to them. So, <clears throat> I guess this is going to go like this for a little while, unless and until Marco actually realizes what he wants to do himself, and Cora also realizes what she wants to do him herself. But for now, for this episode, uh, most of the blame lied uh, on Marco, then Cora, when Bolin was not at any fault at all. Now... I, I, like, I said my reasons. The reason why Marco is most at fault, he was indecisive. He was kind of like, you know, kind of getting, like, you know, didn't even know what to do. Like when he saw, <clears throat> like in the beginning, he rejected Korra. And then when he saw Korra and Bowling having fun, he was like, oh, like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you messing with my brother? And Korra kind of, you know, like lashed back at it. She was like, oh, are you jealous? This, that, like, you know, like stuff happened. They, they completely messed up the whole matches and stuff. And that was happening, and then that scene where Bolin suddenly says that I don't know what to do, like you know, I like Asami, but I like you too. This, that, you know, like that thing, and like you know, so he was, I think, the most at fault here. Then comes Cora's fault, which is she does something that she probably shouldn't, shouldn't have done there. That said, suddenly, you know, like <clears throat> kissed him in, like you know, at that moment. But that's just as I said, like you know, youthful mistake. <laughs> mistake of youth uh no mistakes of youth so and like bowling saw that bowling got heartbroken this that so yeah like that's why like that's that's where uh Cora's fault lies you know that that's a scene that suddenly kissing him you know after like you know kind of going along with bowling and like you know obviously she's not dumb i'm sure she kind of realized what bowling was trying to do and how it you know she she like you know the way bowling was kind of flirting with her i'm sure she realized like <clears throat> what like you know why like you know why she was he was doing that but so even after knowing that like you know that seems like, you know uh, suddenly kissing Marco that obviously that's not something she should have done so that's where uh, Cora's fault lies so yeah these these are all like you know the little faults that they did but as I said like you know they're very new to all of this and I'm sure that none of them have proper you know experience in all of this so that's why they are making like you know mistakes like this and they're probably going to make more mistakes like this probably in the future as well unless and until they learn it you know little by little so yeah nothing you can do about it i feel sorry for bowling in this episode like he was the one who was most affected by this whole situation and yeah he was he was not at fault at in any ways because you know he was basically he just he had his eyes on Korra from the beginning from the beginning episode when he met her and he has always been trying to kind of like you know like go along with her and all that stuff so like you know like this episode he was trying to do the same he from the beginning he tried to like you know like uh he was like you know he was kind of like you know flirting with Cora and that like you know doing that type of stuff and asking her for dinner and stuff so he did what he like you know like was always doing and he just got caught in this whole crossfire of Marco and Cora's problems. Like this is basically Marco and Cora's problems. And he, they basically involved him who had nothing to do with this. And he was just basically uh, like, you know, like just just someone who liked Cora and he just got involved in this for no apparent reason and even got hurt. So yeah, like, ah, uh, <laughs> That's why I'm saying, you know, like Bolin had nothing. Like, and I feel bad for him. It's just he was just a victim of this whole situation. <clears throat> okay. Um. Not only Bolin, I feel like Asami is also a victim in this situation. Like, like at least Bolin kind of knows what's happening. 
Asami doesn't know anything. Like, this is happening all behind her. Like, I feel like, I don't know if she'll ever, like, you know, in, get informed about this situation in the future or not. She'll realize this or not. But when she actually does, I'm sure she'll be hurt a lot. So, yeah, the only victims out of this situation was Bolin and Asami. Probably, probably when she'll know what happened here. And this all of this happened because of Marco and Cora's own problem. So they really need to get this thing sorted out and not involve any other people into their own mess, like you know, problems. Like that's not even something that you should do. Because obviously, like I don't know, like I, I, how this is going. Obviously, I think Asami likes Bolin, uh, not Bolin. Sorry, my God, uh, Marco and you know like so like all of these things were happening behind her back so i don't know <sighs> damn <laughs> i didn't i never thought i would have to actually have a discussion about stuff like this <laughs> in avatar like obviously this is not avatar but still you know like it's like a sequel of avatar <laughs> my god wow this this episode took me completely like when i was not expecting it something like this and yeah that was this whole episode you know like i kind of explained the whole situation my take on this and uh, i really hope that bolin uh, and not bolin oh my god marco and cora source this stuff out as soon as possible yeah and i think they did in a way in the end you know like we can kind of see them kind of making up like i feel like bolin is all good with this and I have to say, like, you know, like, um, this episode probably kind of heightened my respect for Bolin here because he, like, you know, like, he took it in a very, like, you know, forgiving way and he just forgave Korra. Like, I don't know many people who could have done that because he was clearly showing that he, like, you know, was affectionate towards Korra and Korra probably, like, and I'm sure, sure Korra realized that. So even after that, seeing, like, you know, something like that, and him like you know forgiving Korra so easily after that whole situation good like I'm, I'm 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 really like you know my respect kind of grew on bolin like hats off to him like he he took the correct decision here you know and he he decided to forgive Korra, and that's good that really takes i think quite a big of big heart and good for bolin you know and uh yeah but i don't know like I feel like my <laughs> impression on Marco kind of went down a little bit. A little bit, not much, a little bit. Uh, but for Korra, it's kind of still in the same place because, um, you know, like, as I said, Korra, that thing he, she did was basically her mistake that she realized in the, like, you know, later on. It's like something that she suddenly did. So, but for Marco, he, he was indecisive. That's why my... You know, like the thing kind of went down a little bit, and he knows that he's actually like you know, involved with Asam, uh, Asami. Still, he like you know was kind of like you know I don't know like <laughs> that stuff happened. So yeah, a little bit. My no, no. My in my opinion, uh, Marco a little bit. You know, my my impression on him went a little bit lower, but for Bolin it kind of increased. Like good for Bolin. My God, he took it in a really good way and he forgave Korra for that so easily uh, mostly because you know because they're friends and like you know like like they had a good crack chemistry like you know they they, they were great friends with each other and that's why I'm guessing it was so not like you know it was a little bit easier for Bolin to forgive Korra uh, because they do want to keep being friends and yeah that's good so yeah but I think this will probably be the it for Bolin and Korra like, I don't know, like, I feel like after this, Bolin probably won't, I don't know, we'll have to wait for that. Won't try to, you know, like, flirt with Korra anymore. Like, I'm, I'm not sure, like, we'll have to wait for that. But the whole situation with Marco and Korra is still in a bit of a problematic position. So, ah, I don't know, we'll have to see. But yeah, like, you know, they kind of involved a lot of people in this whole thing. Uh, not a lot of people, but, you know, the whole team kind of got involved in this mess. Um, and they were kind of losing the matches, all that stuff. But by the end, Korra, since, you know, like when all of them went, went, got, got disqualified, Korra still kept his, her, you know, like, a conf not confidence, but she still kept her um, 
determination yeah uh, she did not want to give up and she was able to easily handle all all the three of them and that's what i said you know like cora probably at that moment need 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 needed a little alone time you know like since both of them got disqualified she was completely able to fight not thinking about them at all like the main problem was because she was like you know while like you know they were on the uh like you know on the sports ground in the tournament um like you know like she was constantly thinking about bolin and marco you know who were just behind her so that was the big problem here so as soon as they got disqualified i think cora like you know little burden kind of went off of cora's shoulder and she was like yeah i can do this now and she solely focused on fighting and she was able to easily overpower them because obviously she's the avatar she has a lot more advantages like you know like in a way she was also using air bending not air bending but she was using her like you know the technique that she learned from Tenzin so yeah that that gave her a chance to win and uh, he dodged she dodged so nimbly and took advantage of that situation and took all of the three opponents out at the same time and you know they won and like you know like that also uh, like you know made Marco realize that yeah they should not have just gave up like that so easily you know like Marco and Bolin they they should not have just gave up and you know they thanked Cora as well saying that yeah thank you for like you know not giving up yeah and now the uh, the final will be the what was the name the bats or something i can't remember the name but that guy oh my god oh that's like i forgot to talk about him he he like, the way they showed him you know like the way he was moving like you know and like, you know, his mannerisms and everything is uh, is of a rich spoiled brat you know like obviously that's him like i can like you know like everyone can gather from their interactions like he was too full of himself and you know so but he's i'm sure he is quite talented in you know this um pro bending matches because obviously otherwise how could like you know they be in the finals i'm sure he's talented but that does not you know give you the right to look down on others and just you know insult them so yeah hopefully uh we win you know the final match and we can show him that yeah <laughs> you know like kind of hammer down his ego a little bit <laughs> we'll have to see okay the next episode i'm going to start that um was there anything else here oh we also get got a little not a backstory but a little section where i think Pema, that was her name yeah uh tenzin's wife she talked about um tenzin's uh past a little bit how she was able to like you know she confessed and took tenzin and all that stuff so i'm guessing we might get more about that in the future um i really hope because i would i would like really love to see some backstory of tenzin you know and stuff like that maybe some little recollections and stuff i would love that so yeah anyways that was episode number five yeah episode number five we'll, we'll start with episode number six now so yeah without further ado let's get started i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference let's start all right here's the countdown three two one go Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> wolf bats. Okay, yeah, that was the name. Wolf bats. Dan Ho. Okay, that's his name. And the winner is, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, they're practicing. Oh, wow. <laughs> cabbage corp. Oh, cabbage corp. Is it, is it the same cabbage guy from after? <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Uh, wait, is this Amon? Oh god. What? Hmm. Oh great. So he's not a fan of the bending matches, obviously. I don't think so. Like I don't think they'll do this because if he if they actually do stop this, that'll be like actually giving in to Amon. And I'm sure that would be a bit bad. I don't think they'll they will. Yeah, Tenzin wants it shut down, but I don't think anyone will... Anyone will... Wait, really? Oh, really? I did not think. Like, it's like they're backing off. True, okay, yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, okay, I understand now. Like, obviously. Ah, uh, that... I was actually talking about that, you know? Like, it's like you're backing away and that will actually give them a uh, higher ground. Whoa! Who the? Oh, it's... Uh, Toffs. Oh my god, this is... Oh god, here we go. Okay. True, that's true. Oh great, that's... that's... That's great for Talok. He doesn't want to take responsibility for anything, so that works so well. Great. Yeah, probably everyone. Hmm. Yeah, this is not my problem anymore. It's all your responsibility. Yeah, you can do whatever you want now. <laughs> Obviously. Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lin. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I knew she was going to say something like that. Wait, really? Okay, I thought... <laughs> okay, I, I was not expecting... Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Well, 
Oh, God. Well, obviously, he just wants to, you know, show his power. This is perfect time for that. Ah, why? Okay, the finals. That's a lot of security. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um All right. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> oh wow <laughs> nice oh damn look at this <laughs> wow all right Uh. All right, there you go. Come on, let's do a little. Yeah, there you go. Woo. Um, okay. Wow. Whoa! Wow, that's flashy. That's okay, that's a bit too flashy. <laughs> wow, these people are All right, let's go. Oh. Oh, come on. Ah. Okay. There you go. Oh no 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 Oh wait are, are they like Wait what's happening Oh my god, the, so the officials are like, have they been bribed or something? Whoa! Wait, what's happening? <laughs> so that's how they're defend- what is wrong with- This is blatant cheating! Okay. Quick, come on. Oh my god. Yes, come on. Just beat them up. 
cheating in an official match? What the hell is? Yeah, obviously. I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. My, like. Like, aren't the ref like, oh my god. Come on, Cora. A little cheating cannot stop you. Oh boy. Come on, Cora. Let's go. I think Cora should go in. Come on, Cora. Yeah, let's go. Okay, this will be good. One versus one, this will be a lot better. I, I hope so, at least. Come on, just whack him off the whole... This guy is... Yes! Yes! Yes, thank you for the instant replay. Nice. <laughs> Come on, just They're calling the refs out completely. Oh! Whoa! What the hell is this? What the hell? Wait, what is happening here? What's up? I think the refs sh should probably be fired from the next one. Like. Are they really? What? Okay, enough with the um. Okay, enough. With... Oh my god, here we go, Amon's. Oh god. Whoa, what's happening? What the? <laughs> Tenzin is too. Preoccupied with okay, Lynn saw it. Saw it. I no. Oh no! Oh no! They're tasing them. Ah. Oh. Oh god, here we go. Oh no! The water! Oh. I don't think you should keep commentating here. <laughs> wow, this guy's. This guy's really. Very good. So, oh my god, they're gonna get beaten up. Uh. Oh no. 
<laughs> well, cheating won't work here, I guess, from now on. Well... Nobody cares about that. Oh my god. Come on, Cora! Oh no, Cora's unconscious now. Oh boy. Oh, they really took their bending. My god. What the hell? Wait, what's happening? Is oh, these are oh, is that Ang? Oh boy! Well, he's not wrong in a way. Oh boy. Oh, Pabu! <laughs> yeah, just... Yeah, just... Bite it off? Can, can he do that? Can you bite off the rope? There you go. Oh my god, they even, they can even do that. Oh boy. Whoa, what's that? Whoa! Are those metal benders? No, what is... Oh no, this is their... okay. My god. Well, you guys were completely... Ah. Oh my god. Yeah, keep cutting. Can't uh, Cora use her... Yeah, she could have easily used fire and I don't know why she did not use her firebending or anything like that to get out of the rope, but all right, let's see. Oh, not enough. Ah, uh, if she knew airbending, she could have Okay, there you go. Lin. I think that was her name, Lin Wei Fong, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Nice. Come on. Yes. Oh boy, that'll hurt. Wow, he doesn't care. Oh. Okay, Lin is here as well. That's good. Oh! Oh! Oh 
my god. Ah. Okay. Wow. The animation is top notch as usual. My god. Oh. Okay. Ah, uh, nice. Oh no. Ah, nice. Okay, there you go. All right. Oh no, the glass. <sighs> My God. Oh. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, but I don't think they could have done anything even if they went. Yep. <coughs> God. Wow, that was the end. Oh. Okay. You know what? This episode made me realize how corrupt everyone is in, in this place. Like, the blatant cheating in front of everyone and the referee's not even been afraid. You know, like, I, I think, like, like, obviously there are, like, you know, cheating happens like this in sports and stuff. You know, like, sometimes referees do get paid and, you know, bribed sometimes. Um, and usually they try to do it discreetly. But these people here are so fearless that they're doing everything in front of everyone and everyone can understand that they're cheating, the referees are being paid off and the referees doesn't, doesn't even care, they're, they're just continuing doing that. And even the com commentator was like, you know, like bringing that up that yeah, the, this time the referees, you know, like uh, it thinks it's a, bit, it's a bit too much, isn't it? They're kind of referring that, like you know, bringing that up as well, but the referees doesn't care. I think that probably shows how much corrupt this place is. Like, the fear is even not even there. Like, you know, like, the, these people are just doing whatever the hell they want to. Like, these wolf bats or whatever, they're buying people. I'm, I'm guessing the referees don't, don't even care because this has been continuing for three or four or five uh, times. Like, because they are the reigning defending champions. And I'm sure they did this before as well. Like, you know, all the times they were in the finals, they probably did that. And probably the, for the first time, the referees were maybe a little bit scared. They were like, oh, we're going to do something like this. What will happen if we get fired or something happens? But I guess nothing happened, probably because they had the backing of the wolf bats. And, um, you know, like they had power. So they didn't even care. For the first time they did it, for the second time they were like, ah, the first time nothing happened. Let's just keep continuing it. And they kept continuing doing this. And now we can clearly see that that's like you know like they don't even care now they're like ah oh, this is like every year like you know like the final we're going to cheat and uh, the referees like you know help them out all the time so yeah that's what's happening and that shows how much corrupt this whole place is i have to say um that one line i'm completely with amon in that is that he's saying that you can see that how much corrupt and how much like you know like yeah corrupt these people are the one who are the winning champions uh, defending champions for five years who are supposed to be the best are the ones who are actually cheating and like you know blatantly in front of everyone and just like you know uh, what do you call it abusing the non-benders or the uh, people who don't have that much money or power that's just what's happening here and this is the reality and you know like 
only that line I'm I'm full in with Amon. Like he actually taught them a lesson. That's a good thing. But other than that, obviously the, his plan is something that obviously no one will actually support because it's not only that he's doing this out of his own good, you know. I, I'm sure he has his own agenda, something. And he said something like, oh, we are going to, like, you know, bring equality to everyone and everything. Obviously, that's not what he's going to do. I'm sure he is going to make, like, you know, tell everyone that, yeah, I'm doing this for equality. But obviously, them, like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, uh, what do you call it? Declaring a war and fighting against the benders and, you know, like defeating them, that will surely make like you know not make the whole thing equal at any way because if if the equalists win uh obviously they are going to be the rulers of the whole thing you know there won't be any equality going on if they win they are going to oppress the benders this time so there's no way any equality will exist after they win this if they somehow win this war or if they somehow are able to um do what they want to do like you know fulfill their agenda it, it won't be equal anymore they are obviously going to oppress the benders that's what's going to happen you know like the, the next time it will be non-benders will be the ones oppressing the benders that's what's going to happen so yeah obviously i'm sure that's how it's going to go like if he really wanted equality he he could have probably went in front of all the like you know big shots and you know like uh, not take a violent approach, but take a more, I don't know, non-violent approach. That that does sound a little bit, you know, too um, fantastical because I don't, I know like things don't go as easy as it like, seems like. Like I'm saying that, yeah, they could have taken the non-violent approach. But as I said, this place is corrupt as hell. And, you know, like I think it would have been a lot difficult if they actually tried to do this in a proper manner. Because I doubt, you know, because of the corruption, nobody would have listened to them. So, but that does not always give him the right to actually uh, oppress the non-benders. Because, like, you know, there are definitely people like the wolf bats who are just full-on corrupt, like, you know, pathetic pieces of human being. And, you know, they do, like, you know... It, it, it was good that they took away their bending. They don't deserve bending at any rate. Like, you know, they were, they were like Ozai. Just like how Ang took away Ozai's bending. The wolf bats, they deserve their bending to be take, uh, taken away. But obviously not everyone is like the wolf bats, you know. Like they're, they're definitely good people in the benders as well. Like, that, that, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, that does not justify, does, that, just, that does not justify his, uh, um, uh, actually fighting against the benders and you know i don't know like like the people who are not at any fault are also going to get involved in this he's going to involve a lot of people who who are not at any fault who are probably good people so yeah this is not the way you should do stuff but obviously like you know like i'm sure amon wants to like you know take advantage of this situation and you know take advantage of the what do you call it the the tension that's ongoing in the people like you know like i'm sure a lot of people are actually victims of the people who bend you know there are a lot of people just who are being bullied by people like the uh, wolf bats you know so you know he's basically taking advantage of their feelings uh, and you know kind of riling them up and using that as an advantage and taking like you know be becoming kind of the leader of everyone and you know trying to control this situation and probably he will obviously he has waged a war against the benders and if you know if he somehow wins the war he's obviously going to take advantage of you know the other people's feelings and um, he himself will rise up on, on 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 the top and he will like the next time he will be the one who will be oppressing all the other people who don't you know uh who are who are the benders and yeah this is going to continue like this so 
I think I think that's how what he's going to do. Look, I'm, I'm, we're still not sure about his actual agenda, but I feel like it is something like that. He's basically trying to take control of this whole situation and gather power and seize power for himself and be at the top or something. I'm not sure if whether he really had that type of a bad past with the benders or not. Even if he had that type of a bad past with the benders, even if the benders oppressed him, you know, that does not give him the right to oppress everyone else. You know, like, as they say, like, what, do you, what is it called? An eye for an eye will make the world go blind or something. So, yeah. So, <clears throat> we'll have to wait to see what his actual agenda is and what he's planning. And even if his plan, like, you know, his agenda is not something as bad as we think it is, still, whatever he's doing is not correct. And, you know, he's actually hurting all the other normal people as well, who are not at any fault. But anyways, this episode here, we meet the... F uh, oh, uh, the beginning of the episode, obviously, like, now here's the thing. The whole situation with Amon um, explained, not, you know, like, warning everyone that, yeah, like, we are going to do this in the uh, pro-bending matches, so don't, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, you have uh, my warning, don't go there and don't, like, you know, participate in that all that stuff he was saying um now here's the thing you know um at the beginning i was like you know like you should not listen to what they're saying because this is the thing you know like this is especially like like you know a political situation um if someone actually like you know like among basically announced this in front of everyone you know in the radio or something so all the citizens know this like, it would have been a different thing if Amon announced this not to everyone, but to only the leaders. It would have been a different situation. But since he announced this to each and every people here, you know, um, if they actually back off and like, you know, stop the bending matches, a negative, like, you know, what can I say? Like, it would have actually affected the normal people's, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they would get scared. You know, like they would think that, wait a minute, they Amon, uh, like, you know, ordered us not to do this and said that he would, he's going to uh, do something bad there. So why are the leaders backing off? Are they really, like, you know, won't they be able to save us from everyone? Are we really safe in this place then? You know, if, if, if they're actually listening to a criminal, like, this is what's going to happen. What would have happened, I think at least you know because they would be backing off just because a criminal ordered them to and since everyone knows this it would have, like you know become a fully what can i say uncomfortable situation like all the people will be scared the normal citizens will be scared like you know like it would have been full chaos and it would obviously reduce the faith that normal people have on the leaders which would actually it, it wouldn't probably like you know be problematic currently but in the future it could probably be a big messy situation so that's why i'm saying you know if amon actually told this to the leaders only and none of the normal citizens got to know this they could have easily like you know stopped the match they could have said something like oh technical problems this that we're not doing this we're postponing this or we won't have it this year they could have done that easily but since amon announced this to each and every people here they could not do that obviously that would be like them being that would actually show that they're being scared of a criminal of a terrorist so that's why i in the beginning i was saying that they should not stop this match it would have been a problem later on but the thing that you know like i hate to say it but the thing that tarlock says here at the for the first time i actually agreed with him as well he said that it would put the normal people at risk which is also something we should think about you know um like like that was the whole problem with the situation it was either you put the citizens at risk or make them like you know like the problem would get escalated later on because if they stopped the bending matches uh it would have been a very negative situation the people would have lost faith in the leaders so either this or that so it was a tricky situation you know like the best way they could have resolved this was if they were actually able to stop Amon at that situation, you know, at that place. Like, you know, like that would have kept the civil citizens safe as well. And they would not be actually, like, you know, the people won't think that, oh, they are scared of Amon. 
that would have been the best situation but unfortunately that did not happen you know Amon basically came and just wrecked the whole place a lot of people were in danger and yeah that also kind of gives a negative impression on the leaders as well so the best thing would have been if they were actually able to stop Amon but unfortunately it did not go like that but yeah Tarlok uh, for the first time Tarlok actually listens to Denzin but then in comes uh, Lin and she says like obviously she's like you know a headstrong lady and she obviously she won't back off she was like not to worry i'll i'll handle everything my my elite forces will be there this that <clears throat> and obviously Tarlok says sees that yeah this is an opportunity you know like i don't have to be responsible for this so yeah as soon as you know lynn said that i'll be responsible for everything i'll take responsibility he was like oh great great news yeah go ahead i don't care <laughs> like wow like this guy this guy really hates to take responsibility <laughs> even in the previous episode like when Korra like you know with the whole thing with them like he completely pushed all responsibility on Korra and if something good would have come out of it he would have taken credit for it if not he would have pushed everything on Korra this guy hates taking responsibility my god <laughs> uh, okay anyways um that's enough about uh Tarlock mm. yeah then like you know like oh and then we get a little <laughs> Baxter, I was just talking about this in the previous section. I was just saying that, like, you know, it would have been really great if we get to see something and listen to something related to Tenzin's past. We do actually in this episode. Um, <laughs> Lin and we get Lin and, like, you know, like Tenzin's past, the whole thing, and how they kind of drifted apart as time went, and Pema basically, you know, took that opportunity. <laughs> And like for a moment, I thought that I really do not think that would be the actual case. When Cora said, like, I, I realized what Cora was going to say. I realized that Cora was probably going to say something like, oh, were you two really involved with each other? And I thought, like, you know, it, like, it would be something that Cora thinks, but that would not be the actual case, I thought. But turns out it was the actual case. Cora, like, you know, uh, predicted correctly, which I was a little bit surprised about. I was not expecting that. And <laughs> oh boy, and that was funny, <laughs> you know. But I, I, I do like you know, th like you know, the, the thing that Tenzin said that we drifted apart because our way point of view was different. I can kind of understand, most probably, like you know, I can probably guess how it went. Most probably, as we see, like you know, Lin is very like a headstrong lady, you know, she does everything in a very straightforward manner, you know, very, uh, you know, like does not back down, that type of a thing. Uh, full of confidence, bold, unlike Tenzin, who takes the more non-violent, the more, like, you know, peaceful approach to everything, even if it means backing down. So that probably, you know, like, um, rifted, make, made them, like, you know, kind of go apart. And they, like, you know, had probably had a difference in opinion on something that probably made them go, like, you know, their own way. So... Most probably it was something like that. I would love if we get more, uh, like, you know, more backstory about them or anything else, you know, uh, I would, like, you know, more backstory and more recollection are welcome. That was that. And then we get to the pro bending matches, like where obviously the wolf bears blatantly cheat in front of everyone. The referee doesn't care. I was just talking about this, you know, how the referee doesn't even care because they know nothing. No one can do anything to them because they have the backing of the wolf bats. Uh, you know backing and the you know monetary power so yeah they were doing whatever the hell they wanted to they didn't even care like they were cheating blatantly in front of everyone and that was just it you know so yeah like that's the amount of corruption that's going on and i loved when Korra actually knocked some sense into the the main guy and i have to say um the only thing i wholeheartedly support Amon that he did in this episode was taking away the bending of those three pricks you know that was I think that was the best uh, that came out of this and they really don't deserve bending like you know like you know like the bending power like I'm, I'm glad that they, they like you know Amon took their bending away but other than that everything that he did obviously was wrong he involved all the people in this you know like they you know the normal people got involved and obviously he's a terrorist so you know we do need to bring him to justice but that one thing <laughs> i i you know like i'm, I'm glad that amon did that 
to those guys because they they would have kept doing this over and over again and like you know it's not just for now that they're, they're, they're basically teenagers and kids for now they're doing small little stuff like this when they grow up and become an adult and seize power for themselves they would have like you know it would have escalated into more dangerous situation and they would have probably done some criminal stuff and like you know bully other people and do whatever the hell they wanted to so thank god amount took away their bending like you know and they 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 won't be able to do anything so drastic in the future and you know so yeah like i'm glad that those those three got their bending taken away like obviously like you know ben taking away bending does not mean that you kill them you know they'll they'll be able to do whatever like you know normal stuff they only they won't be able to bend and i think that like that's a great punishment for them just like how ang took away ozai's bending i'm glad that their bending got taken away by amon so yeah that's one thing i can probably thank amon for other than that all the things that he's doing is obviously wrong and you know yeah okay and then like you know pabu kind of helps us and again Cora here again gets some weird fast like you know images in his in her head like and i don't know if those are flashbacks or, no not flashbacks those were most probably uh, visions of the past or something you know like obviously since he's ang he's like you know his soul is ang's soul or something you know like he's a reincarnation of ang uh i'm guessing he's she's seeing these type of stuff so yeah and you know pabu helps them get out they have a little battle like um the whole situation with them tasing everyone is something i i like you know i, I think nobody was able to ex expect you know like not tenzin not uh lin like you know, they just tased them and just you know they went out of commission they need, really need to take like you know uh some countermeasures against that whole thing you know the tasing thing and uh, yeah like the full advantage was in Amon's like you know side because this was a place with so many spectators like you know like anyone could be posing as a spectator and that's what they did they were all posing as a spectator and when time came they suddenly popped up and used the taser to tase them that's it and then you know like uh, Korra gets out of that whole situation like you know we see a little battle Lin and Korra kind of team up and you know I guess this, is, this is the first time they actually kind of work together you know and they're a good team you know and yeah they fought and everything and Lin was almost able to get into the ship but you know obviously Korra's safety comes first so she jumps down to save her and uh, yeah everything is good Amon basically uh, waged war against everyone all the benders and uh, yeah my god like this we need to do something about this so yeah yeah that was it that was this episode this was my reaction to avatar the last airbender uh book one uh god <laughs> uh usual habit sorry uh, <laughs> this is my reaction to the legend of korra um book one episode number five and six so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that's it so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of Korra. so until then goodbye and have a nice day